Pharma Fraternitatis, or a discovery of the fraternity of the most laudable order of the Rosy Cross. Because our singularly wise and merciful God has poured out his mercy and goodness to mankind in this age, so that we attain more and more to the perfect knowledge of his Son Jesus Christ and of nature, Truly we may boast of this happy time in which we have not only discovered another half of the world which was previously unknown and hidden, but he has also made manifest to us many wonderful and never before seen works and creatures of nature. Moreover, he has raised men and given them great wisdom, which might partly renew and reduce all arts in this our spotted and imperfect age to perfection, so that finally man might thereby understand his own nobleness and worth, and why he is called microcosmos, and how far his knowledge may extend in nature. Although this will not please the rude world, which will instead smile and scoff at it, and because the pride and covetousness of the learned is so great, they will hardly agree on anything. But were they united, they might, out of all those things which in this age God has so richly bestowed on us, collect librum naturae, or a perfect method of all arts. But their opposition is so great that they still keep the old course and are loath to leave it, esteeming Porphyry, Aristotle, and Galen, and that which is but a mere show of learning, rather than the clear and manifested light and truth. If these philosophers were living today, they would gladly leave their erroneous doctrines. But here too is great weakness for such a great work. And although in theology, medicine, and the mathematics, the truth opposes it, nevertheless, the old enemy, by his subtlety and craft, shows his face in hindering every good purpose by his instruments and contentious wavering people. With such an intention of a general reformation in mind, the most godly and highly illuminated father, our brother CRC, a German, the chief and original of our fraternity, has much and long time labored. Because of his poverty, although descended of noble parents, CRC was placed in a cloister at age five, where he learned indifferently the Greek and Latin tongues, and, upon his earnest desire and request, being yet in his growing years, he met a brother, PAL, who had determined to go to the Holy Land. Although this brother, PAL, died in Cyprus, and so never came to Jerusalem, yet our brother, CRC, did not give up and return home, but shipped himself over and went to Damasco, planning to go from there to Jerusalem. But because he was weary of traveling, he remained there a while, and because of his skill in medicine, he obtained much favor with the Turks, and even became acquainted by chance with the wise men who were from Damkar in Arabia, and beheld what great wonders they wrought, and how nature was revealed to them. The high and noble spirit of Brother CRC became so stirred up by these discoveries that Jerusalem was not so much on his mind any more, but rather Damasco. Eventually, he could not bridle his desires any longer, and made a bargain with some Arabians that they would carry him for a certain sum of money to Damkar. He was just 16 years old when he arrived there, yet of a strong Dutch constitution. According to his report, the wise men received him not as a stranger, but as one whom they had long expected. They called him by his name, and showed him other secrets about himself, and when they knew so much, he could only mightily wonder. He learned the Arabian tongue better there, so that in the following year he translated the book M into good Latin, which he afterwards brought with him. This is the place where he learned the advanced medicine and mathematics that the world would have great cause to rejoice over, if only it were filled with more love and less envy. After three years, he travelled again upon the consent and advice of his benefactors, shipping himself over the Sinus Arabicus, the Persian Gulf, into Egypt, where he did not remain long, but only took better notice there of the plants and creatures. He sailed over the whole Mediterranean Sea in order to arrive at Fez, where the Arabians had directed him. 
It is a great embarrassment to our culture that these wise men, so far remote the one from the other, should not only be of one opinion, hating all contentious writings, but also be so willing and ready, under the seal of secrecy, to impart their secrets to others. Every year the Arabians and Africans do send people to each other, inquiring about the arts of the others, to find if they had found out some better things, or if experience had weakened their previous positions. Yearly something came to light whereby their mathematics, medicine and magic, for in these subjects the wise men of Fez are most skillful, were amended. There is nowadays no want of learned men in Germany, magicians, cabalists, physicians and philosophers. If only there was more love and kindness among them, or that the most part of them would not keep their secrets close only to themselves. At Fez, CRC became acquainted with those who are commonly called the elementary inhabitants, who revealed unto him many of their secrets, as we Germans likewise might gather together many things, if there were such unity and desire of searching out secrets amongst us. He often confessed that amongst these wise men of Fez their magic was not altogether pure, and also that their Kabbalah was defiled with their religion. But he still knew how to make good use of all of it, and found still better grounds for his faith, altogether agreeable with the harmony of the whole world, and wonderfully impressed in all periods of time. From this proceeds that great harmonious truth, that even as every kernel or seed contains a whole good tree or fruit, so likewise is included in the little body of man the whole great world, whose religion, policy, health, members, nature, language, words and works are agreeing, sympathizing, and in equal tune and melody with God, heaven and earth. That which is disagreeing with them is error, falsehood, and of the devil, who alone is the first, middle, and last cause of strife, blindness, and darkness in the world. Also, if one were to examine every philosophical person on earth, he would find that which is good and right is always agreeing with itself, but all the rest is spotted with a thousand erroneous conceits. After two years, Brother R.C. departed from the city of Fez and sailed to Spain with many costly things, hoping well, as he himself had so well and profitably spent his time in his travel, that the learned in Europe would highly rejoice with him and begin to rule and order all their studies according to these sure and sound foundations. He therefore conferred with the learned in Spain, showing to them the many errors of our arts and how they might be corrected and from which they could gather the true indicia of the times to come, and in which they ought to agree with those things that are past. Also, how the faults of the church and the whole philosophia moralis were to be amended. He showed them new growths, new fruits and beasts, which harmonized with old philosophy, and prescribed them new axiomata, whereby all things might fully be restored. But it was a laughing matter to them, and being a new thing to them, they feared that their great name would be lessened if they should now again begin to learn and acknowledge their many years' errors to which they were accustomed, and with which they had gained their reputations and fortunes. Let people who enjoy restlessness and disorder be reformed, they said. The same song was also sung to him by other nations, which surprised him greatly because he had expected so differently. He was ready to bountifully impart all his arts and secrets to the learned, if they would have but undertaken to write the true and infallible axiomata, out of all faculties, sciences and arts, and whole nature, as that which he knew would direct them, like a globe or circle, to the singular middle point and centrum. As it is usual among the Arabians, it should singularly serve to the wise and learned for a rule, that also there might be a society in Europe which might have gold, silver, and precious stones sufficient for to bestow them on kings for their necessary uses and lawful purposes. Further, these learned governors might be taught all that which God has allowed man to know, and by which they could at all times of need give their counsel to those that seek it, like the heathen oracles. 
Truly, we must confess that in those days the world was already shaking with great commotions, and some worthy men came forward who forcefully broke through the darkness and barbarism, and left us who came after to follow in the path they had created. Assuredly, they have been the uppermost point in Trigono Igneo, whose flame now will burn more and more brightly, and will undoubtedly give to the world the last light. Such was Theophrastus, Philippus Aureolus Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim, known best as Paracelsus. Such was Theophrastus in vocation and callings, although he was not of our fraternity, yet nevertheless he has diligently read over the book M, and his sharp genius was exalted by it. But this man was also hindered in his course by the multitude of the learned and wise-seeming men, that he was never able peaceably to confer with others about the knowledge and understanding he had of nature. And therefore in his writings he instead mocked these busybodies, and never showed them altogether what he was. Yet nevertheless, there is found in his work the well-grounded aforenamed harmonia, which without doubt he would have imparted to the learned, if he had not found them more worthy of subtle teasing than to be instructed in the greater arts and sciences. Because of this he spent his time with a carefree life, and left the world to their foolish pleasures. But let us return to our loving father, Brother C.R., who, after many painful and fruitless travels, trying to impart his true instructions, returned again to Germany. And he was glad he did, because of the alterations which were shortly to come, and of the strange and dangerous contentions. There, although he could have bragged with his art, especially of the transmutations of metals, yet did he esteem more heaven and heavenly men than all vain glory and pomp. So he built a simple and appropriate habitation, in which he ruminated on his voyage and philosophy, and reduced them together in a true memorial. In this house he spent a great time in the mathematics, and made many fine instruments, ex omnibus huius artis partibus, of which there was but little remaining to us, as hereafter you shall understand. After five years, the wished for reformation came again to the forefront of his mind. He doubted that anyone would help him with this reform, despite his passion, fervor, and weariless determination. But still he undertook the quest again, and to bring together a few good men with him. He had a great affection for three men who had been in his first cloister, three of his brethren, Brother G.V., Brother I.A., and Brother I.O., who had some more knowledge of the arts than most others at that time. He bound those three to himself with oaths to be faithful, diligent, and secret, and also to commit carefully to writing all that which he would direct and instruct them in, to the end that those who were to come, who through special revelation might be received into this fraternity, would know all that was to be known without any error. This is how the fraternity of the Rosy Cross came into being, first by four persons only, and by them was made the magical language and writing with a large dictionary which we still daily use to God's praise and glory, and in which we find great wisdom. They also made the first part of the book M, but because labor was great indeed, and the constant flow of the needy and sick through their doors hindered them, and during this period his new building, called Sancti Spiritus, was finished, and they decided to draw and receive more members into their fraternity. To this end, several men were chosen, Brother R.C.'s cousin, and Brother B., a skillful painter, G.G. and P.D., their secretary, all Germans except I.A., so in all they were eight in number, all bachelors and of vowed virginity, and by whom was collected a book or volume of all that which man could desire, wish, or hope for. Although we do now freely confess that the world is much amended within the last hundred years, yet we are assured that our axiometer shall immovably remain until the world's end, and also the world in her highest and last age shall not attain to see anything else. For our rota takes her beginning from that day when God spake fiat, and shall end when he shall speak pereat. Yet God's clock strikes every minute, where ours scarcely strikes perfect hours. 
We also steadfastly believe that if our brethren and fathers had lived in this our present and clear light, they would more roughly have handled the Pope, Mahomet, scribes, artists and scholars, and showed themselves more helpful, not simply with sighs and wishing for their end and conclusion. When these eight brethren had put together and ordered all things amongst themselves, to the degree that there was no great need of further labor, and every one of them was sufficiently instructed and able perfectly to discourse about the secret and manifest philosophy, they concluded that they would not remain together any longer, but, as they had agreed from the beginning, they separated themselves into several countries. By this means, not only might their axiometer become more profoundly examined by the learned quietly and secretly, but that they themselves, if in some country or other they discovered anything new, or perceived any error, might inform one another of it. Their agreement was this. First, that none of them should profess any other thing than to cure the sick, and that gratis. Second, none of the posterity should be constrained to wear one certain kind of habit, but therein to follow the custom of the country. Third, that every year upon the day C, they would meet together at the house Sancti Spiritus, or write the reason for their absence. Fourth, every brother should look about for a worthy person who, after his decease, might succeed him. Fifth, the word R.C. should be their seal, mark, and character. Sixth, the fraternity should remain secret for one hundred years. They bound themselves to each other to keep these six articles. Five of the brethren departed, only the brethren B and D remained with the father, brother R.C., a whole year more. When these likewise departed, then his cousin and brother I.O. remained by him, so that he had two of his brethren with him all the days of his life. And although as yet the church was not cleansed, nevertheless we know that they did think of her, and what they looked for with longing desire. Every year they assembled together with joy and made a full resolution of that which they had done. There must certainly have been great pleasure to hear truly and without invention related and rehearsed all the wonders which God had poured out here and there throughout the world. Everyone may be certain that such persons as were sent and joined together by God and the heavens and chosen out of the wisest of men as have lived in many ages, did live together above all others in highest unity, greatest secrecy, and most kindness one towards another. In this most laudable way they spent their lives, but although they were free from all diseases and pain, yet even still they could not live beyond their time appointed by God. The first of this fraternity which died, and that in England, was I.O., as Brother C. long before had foretold him. He was very expert and well-learned in Kabbalah, as his book called H. Witnesses. In England he is spoken of much, and chiefly because he cured a young Earl of Norfolk of the leprosy. They had concluded that, as much as possibly could be, their burial place should be kept secret, and to this day it is not known to us what became of some of them. Yet everyone's place in the fraternity was supplied with a fit successor. But this we will confess publicly in these presentations to the honor of God, that even though we have learned untold secrets out of the book M, although before our eyes we behold the image and pattern of all the world, yet there are not shown unto us all of our misfortunes, nor the hour of our death, the which only is known to God himself, who by this means desires to keep us in a continual state of readiness. But more will be said of this in our confession, where we will set down 37 reasons why we now make known our fraternity, and proffer such high mysteries freely, without constraint or reward. Also we do promise more gold than both the Indies bring to the King of Spain, for Europe is with child, and will bring forth a strong child, who will stand in need of a great godfather's gift. After the death of Brother I.O., Brother R.C. did not rest, but as soon as he could, called the rest together, 
and then, as we suppose, his grave was made, although hitherto we, who were the latest, did not know when our loving father R.C. died, and had no more but the bare names of the beginners and all their successors to us. Yet there came to us a secret, which, through dark and hidden words and speeches of the hundred years, brother A, the successor of D, who was of the last and second row of succession, and had lived amongst many of us, did impart to us of the third row and succession. Otherwise, we must confess that after the death of the said A, none of us had in any manner known anything of brother C. R. and of his first fellow brethren, than that which was extant of them in our philosophical bibliotheca, amongst which our axiometer was held for the chief and primary, rota mundi for the most artificial, and protheus for the most profitable. Likewise, we certainly do not know if those of the second row have been of like wisdom as the first, and if they were admitted to all things. It shall be declared hereafter to the gentle reader not only what we have heard of the burial of Brother R.C., but also it shall be made manifest publicly by the foresight, sufferance, and commandment of God, whom we most faithfully obey, that if we shall be answered discreetly and Christian-like, we will not be ashamed to set forth publicly in print our names and surnames, our meetings, or anything else that may be required of us. Footnote, this never happened. Now, the true and fundamental story of the revelation of the high illuminated man of God, Fra CRC, is this. After A died in Gallia Narbonensi, Footnote, a Roman province located in what is now Languedoc and Provence in southern France, there succeeded in his place our loving brother N.N. This man, after he had come to us and we had taken the solemn oath of fidelity and secrecy, informed us, bona fide, that A. had comforted him in telling him that this fraternity should before long not remain so hidden, but should be helpful, needful, and commendable to all the whole German nation. Of all this, he was not in any way in his mind ashamed. The next year, after he had performed his teaching correctly, and was now thinking of travelling, being for that purpose sufficiently provided with Fortunatus purse, he thought, being a good architect, to alter something of the building, and to make it more fit. In such renewing, he saw the memorial table, which was cast of brass, and contained all the names of the brethren with some few other things. He desired to transfer this into another more fitting vault, for where or when Brother R.C. died, or in what country he was buried, was by our predecessors concealed and unknown to us. There was a great nail stuck into this table, and when it was withdrawn forcefully, it took with it a big chunk out of the thin wall or plastering of a hidden door. And so he accidentally uncovered this door, and we with joy and longing threw down the rest of the wall and cleared the door, upon which was written in great letters, Post Kentum Viginti Annos Patebo, with the year of the Lord under it. Therefore we gave God thanks, and let it rest that same night, because first we would overlook our rota. But we must refer again to the confession to be published later, for what we here publish is done for the help of those that are worthy, but to the unworthy, God willing, it will be of little profit. For like as our door was after so many years wonderfully discovered, also there shall be opened a door to Europe when the wall is removed, which already is beginning to appear, and with great desire is expected of many. On the next morning we opened the door, and there appeared to our sight a vault of seven sides and seven corners, every side five feet broad, and the height of eight feet. Although the sun never shined in this vault, nevertheless it was enlightened with another sun, which had learned this from the sun, and was situated in the upper part in the centre of the siding. In the midst, instead of a tombstone, was a round altar, covered with a plate of brass, and this was engraved, A.C.R.C. Hoc Universi Compendium Unius Mihi Sepulchrum Feci. Round about the first circle or brim stood, Jesus Mihi Omnia. 
In the middle were four figures enclosed in circles, whose circumscription was one, nequa quam vacuum, two, legis jugum, three, libertas evangelii, four, dei gloria intacta. This is all clear and bright, as also the seventh side and the two heptagons. So we kneeled down together and gave thanks to the sole wise, sole mighty and sole eternal God, who has taught us more than all men's wits could have found out, praised be his holy name. This vault we parted in three parts, the upper part or siding, the wall or side, the ground or floor. Of the upper part you shall understand no more at this time, but that it was divided according to the seven sides in the triangle which was in the bright centre. But what is contained in it, you that are desirous of our society, shall, God willing, behold the same with your own eyes. Every side or wall is parted into ten squares, every one with their several figures and sentences, as they are truly showed and set forth concentratum here in our book. The bottom again is parted in the triangle, but because in this place is described the power and rule of the inferior governors, we will not discuss these for fear of the abuse by the evil and ungodly world. But those that are provided and stored with the heavenly antidote do without fear or hurt tread on and bruise the head of the old and evil serpent, which this our age is well fitted for. Every side or wall had a door for a chest, wherein there lay divers things, especially all our books, which otherwise we had, and also the vocabulario of Theophrastus Paracelsus of Hohenheim, and these which daily unfalsified we do participate. In these we also found his itinerarium and vita, whence this relation for the most part is taken. In another chest were looking-glasses of diverse virtues. In other places there were little bells, burning lamps, and chiefly wonderful artificial songs. Generally all was done for the purpose that if it should happen, after many hundred years the fraternity should come to nothing, they might by this singular vault be restored again. Now, as we had not yet seen the dead body of our careful and wise father, we therefore removed the altar aside. Then we lifted up a strong plate of brass and found a fair and worthy body, whole and unconsumed, as the same is here lively counterfeited, with all the ornaments and attires. In his hand he held a parchment called tea, the which next unto the Bible is our greatest treasure, which ought not to be delivered to the censure of the world. At the end of this book stands this following elogium. Granum pectori Jesu incitum. Se a se, ex nobili atque splendida Germaniae a se familia oriundus, vir sui seculi divinis revelationibus, subtilissimis imaginationibus, indefesis laboribus, ad celestia atque humana mysteria, arcana ve ad missus postquam suam, quam arabico at africano itineribus collegerat, plus quam regiam, atque imperatoriam gazam suo seculo nondum convenientem, posteritati eruendam custodi visset, et iam suarum artium, ut et nominis, Fides ac conjunctissimos herides instituisset, mundum minutum omnibus motibus magno illi respondentem fabricasset, hoque tandem preteritarum, presentium et futurarum, rerum compendio extracto, centenario maior, non morbo, quem ipse numquam corpore expertus erat, numquam alios infestare senebat, Ullo pelente, sed spiritis dei evocante, illuminatam animam inter fratrum amplexus et ultima oscula, fidelissimo creatori deo redidisset, pater delictissimus, frater suavissimus, preceptor fidelissimus, amicus integerimus, 
a suis ad centum viginti annos hic absconditus est. Underneath they had subscribed themselves one fra I A fra C H Electione Fraternitatis Caput two fra G V M P C three fra F R C Junior Highways Sancti Spiritus four fra F B M P A Pictoret Architectus five fra G G M P I Cabalista Secundi Circuli one fra P A Successor fra I O Mathematicus two fra A Successor fra P D three fra R Successor Patris C R C cum Christo Triumphantis At the end was written Ex Deo Nastimur in Jesu Morimur per Spiritum Sanctum Revivistimus. At that time, Brother I O and Brother D were already dead, but their burial place, where is it to be found? We do not doubt that our Fra Senior has the same and some special thing laid in earth and perhaps likewise hidden. We also hope that our example will stir up others more diligently to inquire after their names, which we have therefore published, and to search for the place of their burial. The most part of them, by reason of their practice and medicine, are yet known and praised among very old folks. So might perhaps our Gaza be enlarged, or at least be better cleared. Concerning Minutum Mundum, we found it kept in another little altar, truly more fine than can be imagined by any understanding man, but we will leave it undescribed until we are truly answered upon this our true-hearted farmer. So we have covered it again with the plates, and set the altar thereon, shut the door and made it sure with all our seals. Moreover, by instruction and command of our rota, there are come to sight some books, among which is contained M, which were made instead of household care by the praiseworthy MP. Finally, we departed from one another and left the natural heirs in possession of our jewels. And so we do expect the answer and judgment of the learned and unlearned. However, we know after a time there will now be a general reformation, both of divine and human things, according to our desire and the expectation of others. For it is fitting that before the rising of the sun, there should appear and break forth aurora, or some clearness or divine light in the sky. And so, in the meantime, some few which will give their names may join together in order to increase the number and respect of our fraternity and make a happy and wished-for beginning of our philosophical canons prescribed to us by our brother R.C., and be partakers with us of our treasures, which never can fail or be wasted in all humility and love to be eased of this world's labors and not walk so blindly in the knowledge of the wonderful works of God. But that also every Christian may know of what religion and belief we are, we confess to have the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the same now in these last days and chiefly in Germany, most clear and pure is professed, and is in these days cleansed and void of all swerving people, heretics and false prophets, in certain and noted countries maintained, defended and propagated. Also we use two sacraments, as they are instituted with all forms and ceremonies of the first and renewed church. In Politia we acknowledge the Roman Empire, and Quarta Monarchiam for our Christian head, albeit we know what alterations are at hand, and would fain impart the same with all our hearts to other godly learned men, notwithstanding our handwriting which is in our hands, no man, God alone, can make it common, nor any unworthy person is able to bereave us of it. But we shall help with secret aid this noble cause, as God shall permit or hinder us. For our God is not blind as the heathen's fortuna, but is the church's ornament and the honor of the temple. Our philosophy also is not a new invention, but as Adam after his fall had received it, and as Moses and Solomon used it, 
it should not be doubted or contradicted by other opinions or meanings. But seeing the truth is peaceable, brief, and always like herself in all things, and especially accorded by with Jesus in omni parte and all members. And as he is the true image of the Father, so is she his image. So it shall not be said, this is true according to philosophy, but true according to theology. And wherein Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras, and others did hit the mark, and wherein Enoch, Abraham, Moses, Solomon did excel, but especially with which that wonderful book, the Bible, agrees. All that same concur together, and make a sphere or globe, whose total parts are equidistant from the centre, and about this more at large and more plainly shall be spoken of in Christianly conference, in den Buch des Lebens. But now concerning, and chiefly in this our age, the ungodly and accursed gold-making, which has gotten so much the upper hand, and in the name of it, many renegades and roguish people conceive and execute great villainies, and connive and abuse the credit which is given them. Nowadays, the ordinary discerning man holds the transmutation of metals to be the highest point and fastidium in philosophy. This is all their intent and desire and that God would be most esteemed by those and would honor those who could make great store of gold, the which with spontaneous prayers they hope to obtain of the all-knowing God and searcher of all hearts. But we in these presentations publicly testify that the true philosophers are of a very different mind, esteeming little the making of gold, which is but a paragon, for besides that they have a thousand better things. We say with our loving father CRC, Fi aurium nisi quantum aurum. For to him the whole of nature is detected. He does not rejoice that he can make gold, and that, as Christ says, the devils are obedient unto him, but is glad that he sees the heavens open, the angels of God ascending and descending, and his name written in the book of life. Also, we do testify that under the name of Chimia, many books and pictures are set forth in contumelium gloriae Dei, as we will name them in their due season and will give to the pure-hearted a catalogue or register of them. We pray all learned men to take heed of these kind of books, for the enemy never rests, but sows his weeds until a stronger one roots them out. So, according to the will and meaning of Fra C.R.C., we, his brethren, request again that all the learned in Europe who shall read this our Fama and Confessio, which we have sent forth in five languages, that it would please them with good deliberation to ponder this our offer, and to examine most nearly and sharply their arts, and behold the present time with all diligence, and to declare their mind, either communicato concilio or singulatim by print. And although at this time we make no mention either of our names or meetings, yet nevertheless everyone's opinion shall assuredly come to our hands in what language soever it be, nor any body shall fail who gives but his name to speak with some of us, either by word of mouth or else, if there is some letter, in writing. And this we say for a truth, that whosoever shall earnestly and from his heart bear affection unto us, it shall be beneficial to him in goods, body, and soul. But he that is false-hearted, or only greedy of riches, such a person, first of all, shall not be able in any manner of wise to hurt us, but will bring himself to utter ruin and destruction. Also our building, although one hundred thousand people might be able to see and behold the same, shall forever remain untouched, undestroyed, and hidden to the wicked world. Sub umbra alarum tuarum, Jehovah.